For the next three days, myself and 25 other anglers will be fishing, eating, and living aboard this incredible 135 foot boat. We're going deep, insanely deep actually. We'll be fishing water from 400 feet all the way to 1200 feet deep. That's four Statue of Liberty stacked on top of each other. After we're done fishing, we'll be taking our catch, cleaning it up, and then cooking it into an incredible meal. Join us as we embark on one unique adventure. What's going on guys? I am on the 135 foot American Patriot. We were about to spend three days on this giant boat. This is Mr. Johnny of Johnny Jigs. Hello, hello. Him and his company, they set up this giant trip, a private charter, if you will, for a bunch of us to come out and do a bunch of jigging and bait fishing, so. Whichever one you like. We got here like three-ish hours ago. You know, it takes a long time for 25 guys to load all their stuff into the boat. But right now, everyone's just prepping. We still have like 45 minutes before we leave. Where the guys are either making their beds, rigging their rods, getting their tackle and gear, and just kind of settling in, because we still have like a long, I don't know, 12-ish hour run before tomorrow morning when we start fishing. Okay, so right now I am in what's called the galley. This is where everyone kind of hangs out during the day. This is where all of our meals will be served and it's air conditioned. So it's definitely a place to spend some time in these hot days. Right here we got coffee, tea, soda machine, ice cream machine. I'm definitely gonna be having some ice cream. Also have a full kitchen here. What was the chef's name? Was it Chef Mike? Mike. Chef Mike is going to be making all of our meals. Yeah. How you doing, Mike? Excellent. How are you? Crushing it. Oh, it already smells great. Uh, doing a tour? Yeah, absolutely. This is Jerry, right? Yep. You are the main. You are the head honcho, the main guy. He's going to be putting us on if all of the big happens, fish. If anything happens, I'm guilty. Right? Well, you're guilty, but you know, <laughs> if anything good happens, it's all of the mates. You know, yeah, that's it's, right. it's all it's all they're doing. It's, it's all the leadership. It's all Ralph doing. Ah, it. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bunk room you guys won't see me down here much because pretty much all the time other than right now someone's gonna be sleeping down here but I'm set up around my own comforter and sheets and stuff like that pillow ready to go super cold down here too AC is cranking and I've never had this on a headboat before but there's a shower that you can use whenever Oh yeah. Nothing like some uh, pre-dinner ice cream. We also have YouTube's favorite duo, Victor and Dennis. Uh, we were YouTube too. We used to be, we're old news. You replaced me with this man. <laughs> <laughs> We are underway. Dennis is about to throw a drone up. Will that drone make it back? Who knows? It remains to be question. seen. That's the biggest question. It's pretty deep. 72 hours, no cell signal, no girls. Sorry, Brooke and Christina, we love you, but you know, just catching fish with the boys. We got a good crew. If you meet so many different you. people on the boat, it's gonna be a good time. It, it forces you to, to live in the moment. Yes. And that's what's awesome about it. Well, you gotta post on Instagram first so everyone knows you're living in the moment, Dude, right? it looks like we're on a sunset cruise. Doesn't look like we're going fishing. Boys trip. <laughs> Catalina Island wine mixer. <laughs> <laughs> this big. All right, Vic, what are you doing? Big salad guy over here. Yeah. Chef Mike whipping it up. Oh, yeah. We got some chicken and shrimp Alfredo. Wow. Thank you very much, kind sir. You are welcome. Chicken or shrimp in your office. I feel like there's very few places in the world you're gonna get a view like that. Okay, so we are winding down for the night. Vic and I are making up some rigs for deep dropping tomorrow, and we still have like, I don't know, probably a good 10, 11 hours before we get to the fishing grounds tomorrow morning. So I will see you guys in the morning for breakfast and for some fishing in some super deep water. 
Good morning, everyone. I just walked out here, and we are actually hooked up. Someone's got something really, really good. Apparently, the first run was really, really big. Oh. Dude, you still get ripped. <laughs> Jesus, bro. <laughs> it's that early morning, you know yeah. what I mean? Wake you up. We still have the boat in gear. You kind of got to keep the boat in gear in order to keep the fish behind us because if it is the right species like Oahu, and it gets out in front of us, it's going to get some slack. It's going to rip that hook out of his mouth. So keeping the boat in gear, we slowed down just a little bit and uh, winding on it. A little anticlimactic right now while we're winding on it, but get it in. Hopefully, it's a really good fish. So at this point, we were actually still about two, three hours away from the fishing grounds. But what guys do is they wake up early in the morning and set out trolling rods in hopes of catching a wahoo or any other pelagic species. They troll lures kind of like this one that I'm holding right here on big, heavy rods. And it's kind of just a free for all. Whoever brings a rod and gets first to a rod holder can kind of put it out. My guys, Mark and Seton are absolutely <laughs> giving their all into this fish. I think it ripped a ton of line and their line was, and their lure was super far behind the boat. So they had a lot of work to do. Go. Everyone's getting real anxious, real anxious. There's a whole crowd of everyone watching. <laughs> it's the only action we've go, seen. Go, go, We're go, good. Go, 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 go. I get the lead. Nice work, boys. Yes. This man was just trying to eat his bacon and eggs, and he had to reel that in. That's it. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a good way to start the morning. After another hour or so, we were getting close to the actual fishing grounds, where we were going to be doing some serious bottom fishing. Now there are a ton of species that you can catch out here, and I just have a few listed, but my goal was to check off as many of these species as possible. In addition to catching all of these awesome species, there's also even more incentive because we have active wagers on the boat for the biggest fish overall and the biggest snapper or grouper on a jig. So I planned on fishing hard, getting very little sleep, and putting myself in the best position to put some big fish on the deck. As Jerry put the boat in neutral, I decided the first thing I was going to do was drop a slow pitch jig. Hey Will, what are you guys calling this one? That's the falling leaf. All right. It's guava falling leaf. We are dropping this Johnny Jigs. Guava falling leaf. That is quite the name. Right now, I might as well use it while I still can. What, what did you put the electric on? We just hooked up on the bottom on the jig. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're tight. Tight on the flutter leaf, leaf, falling leaf, no. falling leaf. One drop. No, I don't have the one drop anymore. Oh. I have the falling leaf. This rod is kind of cool. This is the Johnny Jigs rod. They call this the rail rod. A lot longer, really nice for this head boat. I can see, you guys can see, I can actually get that foregrip on the rail, kind of like a California tuna fisherman would. Now I'm just steady cranking, getting this fish up to the surface. Doubled, son! Yes, sir! Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo, doubled up on the jigs. Oh, baby! Jigs are starting to get bites. That's what we like to see. It goes through phases, man, where the baits are getting eaten, and then other times where the jigs are getting eaten. That's why it's good to have guys oh, that do that both. that looks like the right flavor, Ryan. That looks good. That looks like the right flavor. There we go. That's oh, a beautiful scamp. Nice scamp. Beautiful scamp. Beautiful. Let's just start the trip. Oh! There we go. First drop with that jig. We just got a beautiful double with Johnny here. Both hooked up on the jigs. A really nice scamp grouper. Beautiful coloration on these fish. You see the yellows in the mouth and in the eyes. And that fan tail, almost like a little bit of a broom. These are one of my favorite eating fish by far. A lot of people call them pre-buttered because they have a buttery taste to them in the meat. Man, I'm stoked. Good Just work, the right brother. texture. Yes, yeah. sir. Good work. Okay, let's drop back down with the Johnny Jigs falling leaf and guava, I think he said. Got that bite. With multiple people trying to jig on the boat at a time, you need to develop some kind of rotation. So we essentially would start on the right side of the boat and work our way 
to the left to not tangle anyone up as our jigs drift. There we go, hooked up on the jig. This is a good fish. This is a good fish for sure. This is a good fish for sure. Woo! Nice fish. Something smoked the jig on the fall, just off the bottom. Pulled real good, got bit right after Mike did. Woo! Coming around this way? We might have a tuna or something a little more pelagic. Good thing there's no one else jigging right now. Woo, buddy. Love seeing a bend in the rod. It's kind of cool fishing the longer slow pitch rod. You guys can actually kind of see what's going on. A lot of these short rods, you can't really tell. They're even hooked up to a fish on camera a lot of the time. Just stay away from the jiggers, you dick. Or the baiters. <laughs> All right, I'm coming to the left. From the dark. Of course. He's going to the right. I'm going to let him keep going. He's a lot bigger than you think, right? Sharks on him. Cuda? A little shark. He's bigger than you think, right? Yeah, he ain't small, whatever it is. Light leader, Corey. <laughs> there we go. Blackfin in the boat on the jig. There we go. That is a beautiful blackfin tuna that ate the Johnny Jigs one drop. That's like a 420 gram. It's pretty cool, man. You never really know what's going to eat the jigs. And, um, you guys know that you can save on all Johnny Jigs products and all the slow pitch gear that they have on their website using my code flashing on the screen. If you guys are looking to get into slow pitch jigging, definitely check out the links or give the shop a call, tell them I sent you over. They're gonna help hook you up, tell you what you need to get started. Pretty fun, man. It's a cool fish. I'm doing something that I've never done before. We are in super, super deep water, right? And I brought some manual reels to use just to fish traditionally, but I also am really excited to try this. So this is an electric jigging reel. I think it's called the Daiwa Seaborg G300J, something like that. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. But basically, I have this little electric reel with a little battery on my hip, a little fanny pack here, and that is gonna allow me, when I'm deciding I don't have a bite or I didn't get a bite, I wanna reset my jig, I can just have it wind up on its own and I'm not exhausted and I can get back and start jigging again. I don't again. need to do anything, I can just free spool this. You're in, uh, it on. says zero, yeah, it's on. Zero. All right, so we, are doing this thing. Hopefully I don't mess this up with the electric. But I got the 520 gram Johnny Jigs one drop on my little Daiwa Seaborg. I'm gonna cast this up current a little bit. And you guys see that right now, this electric is counting the line going out. So it'll tell me exactly how much line I have out. 440 feet right now. And you see, I'm applying the jig manually. I'm just jigging it manually, so it's just like I'm fishing a normal rod right now. So I tried with the electric for a couple drifts, and the bite kind of slowed down, and I also didn't get any bites. So I decided that fishing the electric reel felt stupid right now, and I decided to move on to something that would feel a little bit more productive. That's fishing some bait. So how's the bait bite? Uh, 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 not too hot. <laughs> some people are catching though. Yeah, it's, I, I think I got in at the wrong time. Slow, slow jig bite, slow bait bite. Dude, the minute I like walked back there, I was like, wow, the whole back of the boat's clear. Drop my jig, jig hits the bottom, hook up. Yep. I was like, ah, this is when I needed to be back there. I don't know, Ryan, I'm not getting them. So how I'm is not this type of fishing though? Like, what do you do? You let your bait sit on the bottom and it's tough to hook them because you got a three pound lead, you got a lot of leader, pretty thick hooks. And unless the fish is big and is gonna swallow it, you gotta like perfectly time when you think they're eating it. And 
put the reel in gear, the electric part, and basically hooks it for you. But we're dealing with small yellow eyes right now. Yeah. Well, that's like a decent size yeah, one, that but wouldn't be bad. But most of them are literally like two pounds. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. We were gonna try doing a little bit of bait fishing. Do you have any squid down here already, or do I need to get some? Oh, okay. Are you putting holes on? All right, we got a nice big old piece of squid. Damn. Dropping down a two squid rig, bringing me back to Messing around trying to catch mangrove snappers and yellowtails growing up. Are you leaving it straight on the bottom? Yeah. No. There we go. I like that. We got fish on. Fish on. You guys see that? That's what we like to see. Hey, you see? Once you do get hooked on the fish, I set the hook on that fish manually. I just kind of cranked it. But now that we got it coming, I just kind of got steady pressure. This electric reel is doing a lot better job than I would of hand cranking because I get tired and then I let it slack up or I might let it slack up. So we'll see if we get this fish in and be my first fish on this electric setup. Come on up. We got color. Got some color. Here we go, we got a blue line action. Bring it back. Bam. Thanks, brother. Very, very cool fish. You guys see, as we move into deeper water, we start seeing different species. This is a blue line tile fish. Delicious species. I caught one of these when I was on the Yankee Cap uh, last year on a jig. My first one was last year, but this is my first on bait. Cool to see, first drop with bait, got a fish in the boat. So. We'll keep getting some meat in the box because that's what we came out here to do is we uh we got friends and family to feed after this trip holy smokes Corey just caught this live squid i think we're gonna put it down on victor's rod look at he just he just goes to the bottom he just moves look he just he doesn't look. know he's not happy with us right now Dude, I don't know if we continued here. fishing along and i started to understand what jerry's plan was he essentially was going deeper and deeper as the trip went on changing up areas that we were fishing and also the species that we would be running into. It seemed like he really wanted to catch as many different species as we could. How you feeling, my friend? I feel good. Yeah. You know, it's, it's tough to get down on yourself. I've caught one vermilion snapper. There's been a few quality fish caught. It is hot as heck. It, is, um, it feels so good to be in the AC right now. We're changing spots. Amazing. <laughs> like, the fact that the, you have this place to come and cool off is very important. We've been on some hellish trips, so this is luxury. Six days in Panama, no AC on the boat from sun up to sun down pretty much, but you just got to keep pushing through. It seems like Jerry, the captain, wants to move further and further deeper because we have almost no current. Like guys were fishing 400 gram jigs in 800 feet of water, which is amazing. Yeah. So I think a lot of times with these deep trout fish, there's no current. It, it just if you're jigging in the same spot over and over, it doesn't look good. Same thing with your squid sitting there. It's just, you need moving water. Moving water is always good. Got some fresh squid. Hook that guy on the 7.0 BKK circle hook. Just kind of hook it through the top of the head, all the way down. And then work it back over the eye of the hook and the top of the knot. That might be an expensive fish right there. Here, Travis already has one. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. Right there, so you were tied up. Yeah, I'll take. I'll, I'll keep it for next time. Okay. Great work, man. That was awesome. That? Beautiful. Look at that. That is Oof. Is that the one that the big snowy that one? That's a shark for sure. Oh. Oh, get him! Go eel! Get him! Go eel! Oh. Was he shooting out some venom? I don't know. He just says the shark doesn't know what to do with it. Come on, I'm just waiting for that little doink doink. There it is. Oh, oh. There it is. Got 
Got them on. We wanted that little doink doink. We got the doink doink. Good job, bro. I can say, guys, this is the only time I've ever been fishing where I can hook up, Ooh. leave my rod fighting the fish for me, walk over grabbing the camera to talk to you guys. <laughs> kind of a weird feeling, to be honest, but you know what I mean? I, I love to try new things, do new things, and bring you guys along for the journey. So it definitely is an interesting experience. Doesn't feel sportsmanlike, but what we're doing right now is we're trying to get meat, trying to bring some fish home because we haven't had a good fish dinner in a while. So we got color. We got color. Reel's gonna stop on its own at 20 feet. We got us a grouper and some yellow line. Excellent. This is my first snowy grouper of the trip. These fish are delicious. You guys can see his belly literally sticking out of his body. That's that pressure difference called barotrauma that fish get. Comes, He came all the way up from 700 something feet of water. But these fish are delicious. I've never really caught one bigger than this though. I'm really hoping that I can get a chance to catch a giant this trip because we already saw one fish over 20 something pounds caught on a jig. So I'm gonna keep doing this. Wow, you know what's crazy too, is this fish feels cold. You know that there's a big temperature difference down there on the bottom. Really, really cool. Check out those teeth too, that is wicked. Okay, this is like round, I don't know, 15, 17, lost count. Got brain damage from this sun out here. We're probably only gonna catch a tangle. Oh yeah, that's a bender. That is a bender. Ooh, we got that good bite. Good hookup right here. Really pulling on. Still got over 400 feet out. This is looking good. Oh yeah, that's what we like to see. What are you thinking? Big queen. You think it's a big queen? My biggest, queen. my biggest queen's like this big. So I think he's a lot bigger. My biggest queen's like. You guys, I can't show you guys. It's small. That's a princess. 85. 82. Uh, looking like you might have yellow. Might have yellow too. I see color. Deep color. Big grouper. Deep color. Nice. We see him. Nice grouper, bro. Nice grouper. Damn. Look at that snowy. Oh man, look at that snowy. Yeah, let's go, buddy. Woo! Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Woo! Look at that beautiful snowy grouper, my biggest by a landslide, that's a stud. Beautiful fish, big old belly coming out of it. Man, oh man, I'm stoked on that. That's so much fun. Definitely not a traditional way of fishing, nothing like I've ever done before, but I'm happy to be here, happy to try new things, and we get to take this incredible fish, this delicious fish home, and share it with our friends and family, so I couldn't be more stoked. I kept bait fishing through the extremely hot afternoon. Hot as in temperature. The fishing was okay. Caught a couple more fish, including this blue line tile. And man, I was just trying not to die of heat stroke at this point. Even went inside a couple times, cool off, get a little snack, whatever I could. I was drinking water all day, but something about a little bit of sugar and salt in the heat definitely brought me back to life. Walked out to see, you know, there were still some fish around. And then my man Johnny jigged up something I had never seen before. Yeah. Critters from the deep. Wow. This is an Alfonsino, guys. If you look, it's got huge eyes, so you can see down there in 1,200 feet deep water. And this fish right here is delicious. Dang, that's sick, man. That's so sick. It looks like a, what do they look like? How's the jigging? <laughs> looks exhausting. Watch out real quick, don't jig. All right, you're good. Tugs and I cringe every time that it tugs. I feel like it's gonna come on close, but we're at. Chef Mike, whipping up some tuna. Oh yeah. Some fresh sushi. 
What else do we got tonight? We got uh, teriyaki chicken, some white rice, some pepper steak, and some fried rice. I've never eaten like this fishing before. I'm used to literally like Slim Jims and like peanut butter and jelly. So this is incredible. It's normal stuff here, man. It's not that crazy. I got Encrustables if you want them inside. Encrustables, you know. Just in case we pull the kids off. That might be later tonight, in the middle of the night. <laughs> now that is the evening, we are anchoring up and you can fish all throughout the night. Um, talking to everyone, they said early night has not been that good, but I'm definitely gonna give it a shot for an hour or two. If nothing's happening, I'm gonna go get some sleep and then wake up real early in the morning hopefully find some tunas or some queen snapper okay so ian captain ian that is oh, yeah. upgraded from victor's video last year is fishing for a giant warsaw grouper you guys are looking on the screen right now at a picture of one that ian caught this year that's a whole bait that's like a shark bait to me that's what it looks yep. like to me or a goliath bait so we're gonna use a big 16 0 circle hook just 300 pound leader 600 foot just like that. Bam. How much lead are you putting that thing out with? I'm starting off with a three pound, but I think I might have to go to a four. The current here is moving pretty decent. <laughs> How big's the hook? Uh, it's a 16 0. Not like some nighttime deep dropping, too. Well, only 400 feet down, but he's got another good bite. Got a double. And it's a queen. What? Is that Doubles. a queen? It looks double long on the bottom. Oh, double vermies. Hey, that's actually another species for me. I haven't caught one of these this trip. That guy just came unhooked. All right, check these guys out. It's called vermilion snapper and or bee liners, depending on where you are geographically. They're actually really delicious, like most deep water fish. We catch them back home every once in a while if you can get deep enough. Whoa, you guys see how far that one slid? You went to the bow of the boat with that one. What? Is that a flying fish? You can fish. Get that camera out of my face, boy. Good, good. Yeah. Like, it's not Good morning, morning everyone. You can't say morning when the moon's out. <laughs> the moon, is, the out, moon is out, but no. So I slept from midnight to four. Victor's been up fishing this whole time. Like what have you caught? Real man. What have you caught? Uh, probably ten yellow eye snapper. Two big sharks that we had on the Warsaw rod. Two black fins. Two barracudas. Two horse eye oh, jacks, a black, a bla another black fin. All right. And that is exactly why we are fishing right now. Because there's black yeah. fins that come up because of the lights of the boat and all the bait. Dump Victor, it. oh, he's got a good one. I gotta get fishing. Okay. Dropping, I don't even know what this is. UVT fishing, 150. Um, just literally most of the time it seems like the tuna's hit it on the drop. So just kind of get it in the shadow line here. There's a lot of bait. Oh, come on, eat it. Oh, I just got cut again. <laughs> Second jig cut off in a row. Lots of kudos out here. <laughs> one? Oh uh, yeah, one. It should look fine. Woo! Had him eat it on the drop. Taking me a while. Watching everyone hook up around me. I'm just getting cut off. But finally got that right bite. This one could be a Benita, honestly, though, because he's going to the surface. <laughs> so we'll see. Might be overconfident. We haven't caught a Benita yet. Yeah, I mean, I would be the one to do it. Woo! This is fun, though, man. Especially after a long day in the sun, coming out here with no sun and jigging some tunas. Most of the boat's sleeping, so we got 
you know. That's my favorite part is yeah. the fact that everyone is inside. Done? Yeah. There we go. Right. Look at that Cuda down there. Woo! When you can bring in quality fish like that on artificial, man, that's awesome. I'll take that all day. That's that BKK assist hook there in the corner of the mouth. I like only using one single hook when we're targeting tunas, especially with a more of a speed presentation. Mainly because I don't want to hook this tuna in the side with the other hook and have him fight twice as hard, make the work double for me. So that guy is pretty sweet. We're going to get him in the box. Jig, uh, just like kind of slow jigging it. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. This one's pulling good. It's charging too. Woo! Sneak back this way. You're good. You're good. guy is shooting to the crowd shooting to the left now it's the thing with these tunas man you can't have too many people fishing or you're gonna have mega tangles all the time oh what do we got it's long it's wahoo it's a wahoo yeah it's wahoo can you get my camera oh you just grab that White line. He's right here. Yeah. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Great work. Come on. Thank you, sir. Oh my God, dude. That's epic. That's my second ever Wahoo on the jig. That's a much bigger one than I caught in Japan, though, man. Right. Hell yeah. Dude, Let's go. Wahoo on the jig got so lucky because these things have super, super sharp teeth. And uh, just got lucky, got them in the corner of the mouth, man. Dude, that's so sick and unexpected to catch a Wahoo on a jig, 40 pound liter. Man, I'm absolutely stoked right now, guys. That fish just made my trip and came, you know, out of absolute nowhere. Thought I had another tuna. And man, got him in the corner of the mouth, that BKK assist hook. Somehow was lucky enough to get him. Man, I'd rather be lucky than good, man. And these fish, they literally have scissors for mouths. I'm just, I'm honestly in disbelief, guys. I'm at a loss for words. It's crazy. Super appreciative, man. And we still have a full day of fishing. My day's made. Everything past this is what it is. So literally the next drop with that jig that I caught the Wahoo on, I got cut off by a Kuda or another Wahoo, who knows. But the hook that I was using was this BKK SF Deep. Got him right in the corner. Insanely lucky, but I'll take the luck and you know, stoked to have BKK partner with the channel. So if you guys want to try assist hooks like these, just go ahead and pick them up in your local tackle shop. Up in the end, back at it again. Only caught six sharks last night trying to catch that one good bait. Yep. Oh my gosh, look at that white noodle. This guy lives on this boat and just comes to catch sharks. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a shark. Yeah. See if we can do it again. As the light started to creep above the horizon, I moved to the front of the boat because I knew that the black fins would start feeding on top. Er that's at least what I had been told traditionally happens out here. So I was throwing a bunch of topwater lures and my cameras were both tuna. off, but y'all, I had a tuna blow up and the <laughs> noise that this thing made was so aggressive, so loud, man, I swear it woke up half the boat. Dude, that blow up on that thing? Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, <laughs> Ooh. Ah! <laughs> oh my God, that was sick. I wish you guys would have saw that blow up. Just blind casting a top water. I, I, I didn't see it. It was so loud. <laughs> Oh my god, that was cool. Oh! Came off? Oh no. I think he came off, yeah. No, just came off. Okay, so I don't know if I'll call it a bust, but uh, didn't get a black fin on a top water this morning. Got some black fins, got that bonus wahoo. Now we are moving out to some deeper water, pulled the anchor up, and ideally we're gonna catch that queen snapper that I've been after. Only caught really really small queen snapper before victor on his last trip on this boat caught a 24 pounder that's an absolute monster maybe do it on a jig maybe do it on bait we will see As I was filming the guys on the front, I couldn't help but notice that a couple of them started to hook up and we were told that this was a great spot for queen snapper. So while I enjoyed filming them, I only watched for another minute or two and then I decided that I had to get this drone out of the air and I had to get a jig in the water because bite windows don't last forever. All right, I'm dropping down. They caught a couple nice queen snappers last drift, so I got the 500 gram Johnny Jigs Torpedo. This has always been a really lucky color for me. The Russian judge gave me a 4.9. Uh, there's the leader. <laughs> Remember those days of yeah. the Russian judge. I'll save you guys the pain that I endured, or I guess lack of pain, I don't really know. Basically from 6.30 in the morning to, I don't know, 10.30 in the morning, I jigged my life away and I didn't catch anything. But what I did do is watch a ton of other people catch fish around me. A little bit frustrating, but is what it is, man. Part of the game. Making me want to switch to the electric, but I'm not going to do it. What? I'm not no, doing not it. Do it. It's not, not doing it. An AJ or a big grouper. Maybe he's a queen because he's running a lot and doing stuff, but like this is the first real fish I've had on the jig this trip. Yeah. It's a nice queen. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Look at that thing. Woo! That's a nice fish. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of that moose. That might be the biggest fish. Look at that moose, son. Go get the scale. Let's see what I Oh my. I think that's bigger than Peter's. God. I think it is. I've never seen one that big. I was going to say 24, but it's not fun. So 26. Uh, that is not the winner. 22. Here we go. Another giant pinky. Nice. Oh, yeah. Zach just had the fight of his life on that giant Ooh. queen. That's probably an 18 to 20 pound queen. Absolute stud. The, por the, porpoise, the porpoise tried to get him, but we won that battle. Winner, winner. Yeah. You guys get any bites on the bait? Uh, no, no. Not really? There was a couple bites in the front, though. Yeah. Well, they're definitely down there. Every drift, someone's hooking up. Will and I just need to get lucky over here. We gotta put it in, the, in their faces, you know? Yeah, I'm clearly not wiggling my jig in the right manner. Another monster. That should be interesting. Come on. There you go. You got him. Okay, so we have three fish on. Mine doesn't feel giant. We'll see. I'm hooked up. We got a couple electrics hooked up, another manual brother hooked up. The manual brotherhood. <laughs> With three or four of us hooked up at one time, I was almost sure that we were gonna lose a couple of these fish. It's just such thin line when you're slow pitch fishing, 900 feet and so many chances for things to go wrong. 
but somehow we were able to untangle this complete mess and land every single one of these fish. I was lucky enough to land this beautiful little snowy grouper, although it wasn't the giant That's queen awesome. that I was after. Look at that double. Well, I don't know what that was. We got, we got three fish landed on that one, four fish landed on that one, two queens, two snowies. I'm still looking for my queen, so I'm gonna get this guy in the box and I'm gonna drop back down because the fish are biting. We continued pushing out to about a thousand feet of water and I watched queen after queen get caught on electric gear. And man, oh man, this was the moment that I knew it was time for a change. I watched something that I absolutely didn't believe, even though I was watching it with my own eyes. We literally have two queen snapper on one jig, two monsters. You can't make it up on this, dude. Man. That is great. That's incredible. I've seen them before, but not on a jig. Not on a jig? I've seen two on one hook, but not on a jig. And how long have you been fishing out here? since 1977 and you're still seeing firsts yes isn't that incredible Absolutely. somebody tells you they know it all yeah they, they don't, don't. <laughs> by a long shot dude look at this you wouldn't believe it until you saw it i got it we got a double gaff right now two queens one jig you gotta play the lottery when you get back kidding me look at these things two studs Two studs. <laughs> All right, I'm going back to the dark side. I'm hooked Go up with my man, side, my man's satchel and my uh, computer reel. So we got 600 gram Johnny Jig Torpedo Glow. A lot of people have been catching on this today. So I'm gonna give it a shot. So while I thought changing to the electric jigging reel was gonna change my luck, it really didn't. I came tight immediately, but something just didn't feel right. After about a thousand feet and, I don't know, an eternity of trying to get this electric reel to wind in this heavy object, I reeled in this freaking rock. While everyone else was catching a, catching giant, beautiful bottom fish, I caught a rock. Just feeling like Charlie Brown on the front of the boat. My luck didn't get that much better. I'm pretty sure I was the only one on the entire boat to snag the bottom in a thousand feet of water. And when you do that, it's almost impossible to break off. Then we had a solid rainstorm come through and everyone that fish hooked up except for me. Now, I'm not complaining because I do think I used up all my luck on that Wahoo in the morning. But man, it's crazy when you fish hard and you don't really catch much of anything, how much your mood is going to change, especially when those around you are catching. Finally got tight with a brand new species for me. This is a black belly rose fish. Now, this is definitely not the target. I want what's eating these. So queen snapper are going to eat these and golden tile fish are definitely going to eat these. By this time, it was nearing the end of the day. We had moved out to about 1200 feet of water and the captain called last drop. This is going to be my last chance to catch that queen snapper or that golden tile fish. Got something a little bit better. All right, so we are hooked on something a little bit better. It's actually stalling out the reel when I'm trying to just straight crank up. So we got maybe a golden tile fish. We will see. Keeping them tight. Not going too fast on the way up. Let's go, Bob. Let's go. Studs. Woo, big golden tile just came in. Bob over here just crushing it. <laughs> I'm still at 800 in. So different than other fishing, man. Like, <laughs> this is a different game of cat and mouse. You know, not putting too much tension. Don't want to rip the hooks out. No clue what the hooks look like in this fish right now. And I have a giant, you know, multiple pounds jig in this fish. You could just be hanging on by a thread. When he goes to pull drag, when he wakes up a little bit, I got to back off, stop cranking, turn the electric off, let him pull. Then when he chills out, try to gain and keep that line tight the whole time. I've never had so much anxiety for a fish that I'm not like pumping and winding for. I'm just kind of just sitting there getting my own head like, am I going to do something wrong? Floating up. Floating up. Got color. Looks like a golden. Big golden. Big golden. Yes, sir. Come on, buddy. Yeah, right. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's a golden tile. Man, let's go. Woo! Yeah, boy. 
Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, Yo, look at that. He's got a squid coming out of him. Look how gnarly that is. That was right in there. Man, he smoked the Johnny Jigs. Got him with both hooks, those BKK, um, freaking SF Deep. Got him, man. Look at that beautiful fish. Woo! -hoo -hoo. That is sick. So we had that crazy rush of all of those golden tiles at the end. Great way to end the fishing. We're all actually getting group photos with all these fish right now. But we'll see you guys back at the dock so you can see the whole pile of all the fish that these 25 guys caught. Like no. Let's take no. We just had a streamer on one of the Wahoo rods. We're on the way in and uh, they let us put a couple trollers out. I don't know how many dudes have cranked on this, so like seven dudes for one fish, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, he's right here. Boy, you want a second one? Yeah, boy! Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. After boating that stud wahoo, the sun was setting on, I would say, a fairly successful trip. And then one more rod went off and my guy Zach actually reeled in another wahoo. They just seemed like they were chewing this night. Another solid fish around 25, 30 pounds. Amazing way to end the trip. At that point, we decided it's time to make some headway. We're all trying to get home. So we reeled up all the trolling rods and we made our way home. So we are officially back. Right now, everyone is unloading their trucks, getting their coolers ready, because on this mat right here, we're gonna lay out all the fish. You guys are gonna see what everyone caught for the whole trip. And uh, yeah, it's a, lot, a lot of work has to be done right now, but cool feeling, good to be back on dry land after a couple days on the water. And I can't wait to clean up some of these fish and cook them back at home, get to share them. I'm gonna be giving a lot of fish away to my friends and family. Um, Super happy to be able to share some of this experience with those that weren't out on the water with me. Cool. Uh, you got, Look at that thing. No, I'm sick. Mine's smaller than that. Three. Damn, nice. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's why I wanted to. So, we got to see who won the pools. We gotta divide up all of our fish into our coolers, and I gotta fillet some fish, so a lot of work to be done. And Victor's gonna lay out in all of these like a weirdo and take a picture, so. <laughs> I want What? Why are you laying in all the fish, sir? We're trying to fillet those. My cooler is starting off looking a little bit better than yours, my friend. 15! We'll see about the end. Well, I have two full coolers. <laughs> Three! One. Oh yeah, look at that bad boy. You know, I see a lot of tiny fish in his cooler. And just quality over here. I don't see a queen in your cooler. Hey, Some size in his cooler. You're really concerned about the size of my cooler, aren't you? I got nothing else to worry about right now. I'm just bored, I need to talk shit to someone. So. Victor says 16 on this snowy, I say 17. 14. 14. Oh, well, we only got 14.2. We were both off. Yeah, we were both off, but it's a dense fish. 27. Still full of a lot of 27. air. Stoked. That's my PB Two. by a landslide. Two. Six. Eight. Number six. Number six. There you go. Well, I'm going to have to come back next trip in order to get one of those. We just found the biggest overall was a giant barrel fish, like 28 pounds. Obviously, the 50 pound wahoo caught on the troll is much bigger than that, but. Troll doesn't count for the tournament. We also had the biggest queen snapper it was like 24-6. And then the biggest grouper was like a 24-6 snowy. I unfortunately wasn't able to compete or get a fish big enough to compete, but overall sick trip and definitely my highlight was that wahoo on the jig. Now let's go fillet up some of these fish. Absolutely. The boys are hard at work. <coughs> Dude, great meeting you. Yeah, yeah, Slanging yeah. it. <laughs> I was trying to get out of the Oh, dude. Okay. Whoa. Oh what God. was that? There are some critters in this marina. There's lots of giant tarp in here. We have this beautiful 
snowy grouper. Caught it on the bait, um, but man, I was stoked to catch this thing. My PV by far, and we're gonna flame up because these fish are delicious. All these deep water fish are especially delicious, but stoked to open this guy up, see what the meat looks like. For our initial cut, there's a lot of meat kind of up towards the head. You can kind of feel it with your fingers. You can feel where it's softer. So we're gonna work our way back, back up towards here, work our way down. Scales off. Wow, that is some white looking meat. Wow, you guys hear that air coming out? These fish are still full of air. So it makes them look so big too yeah. and inflated. Wow, look at that meat. We'll dab off that blood with a little paper towels, but that fish looks delicious. There we go. Beautiful snowy grouper. Coming home, we're gonna cook this guy up in the kitchen. Stoked to try it. What's up guys? Welcome to our new home. This is Christina. For those of you that don't know who she is, I don't know where you've been, but it's my girlfriend. We just got this place together and this will be our first catch and hook cook, catch and cook in our new home. Are you excited? Yes, and we haven't done one in a long time too. Yeah, so it should be a fun time. I'm gonna cook up that snowy grouper. Christina's gonna make a delicious salad, but first we're both starving, so we're gonna make a quick little appetizer. So blackfin tuna? and some of that wahoo that I caught. We're gonna do a quick little sesame seed sear on these guys. So we're gonna do black and white sesames on each of these. So we're gonna cook them essentially the same way. Take some of our black sesame seeds too. And this is more just for looks than anything. I'm pretty sure they taste the exact same way as far as I remember. Sorry. So we have our pan on medium high heat. Also have some sesame oil. We're gonna go sesame oil into the hot pan. Just get that ready. Should be like almost at the point that it's smoking. And with the wahoo, we're gonna go in with our tuna. Now we're already flipping. How much time has gone by? Like literally like 10 seconds. They cook fast. Work of art. Look at my pink chopsticks. <laughs> Are you proud of those things? I am. What should I try first? Uh, I think the tuna for sure. Mm. It's pretty good dip. Mm. I'm just really proud of you for not dropping it with your chopsticks <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm actually pissed because we didn't have any wasabi at the house, but. <laughs> So we're gonna, gonna make like a little bit of a mango puree. Very, very simple. I got one whole mango. Well, I don't know if it's whole, Christina and I have been snacking on it, but we got some mango in there. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of serrano pepper. And then we're just gonna go in with a little bit of lime juice as well. So we are gonna make an apple cider vinegar dressing um, to go on a farro salad. So I got one fourth cup of um, apple cider vinegar. So I'm just adding some honey. Uh, you can use maple syrup too if you want. Adding, um, a fourth cup of olive oil also um, to balance everything out. Uh, I'm just throwing this stuff in. There's no real like order to do this. Um, we're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> you look so nervous. I'm not. I'm just it's like, fun. I'm we're having hungry. fun. A little bit of spicy mustard. That's good for me. <laughs> The recipe called for fresh garlic, but I'm just gonna use garlic powder and salt and pepper to taste. Kind of looks gross right now. Just a little bit of the lemon zest. Just for, um, just to add a little bit of freshness. You can definitely tell 
with the fresh uh, lemon zest. It's, it's delicious. What is farro? So farro is, it's a type of grain. It's much healthier than um, regular rice, uh, especially white rice. Um, it has lots of protein, lots of minerals, very high in fiber. So overall, just a much healthier option. Okay. We're gonna take some radicino. Like uh, we previously said, it's kind of like uh, cabbage, but this adds some nice color and more vegetables into it. We're making a lot of salad here. Apples and dates. These are very, very sticky. Do you want a date, Rye? I'd love to go on a date with you. No, do you want a date? You don't want to go on a date with me. <laughs> and then chopped walnuts. Pecorino Romano. <laughs> Not Italian, but I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna throw that in there, and we're just lightly putting it in and mixing everything together. I don't, well, you don't need a lot of this because um, it's pretty strong. So look at the sheen on this snowy grouper. You know that just comes from the fat content in it, and you know this is gonna be very, very flavorful fish. Typically, you see that on stuff like wahoo. Man. I know this is gonna be good, I'm excited. Basically, some black pepper, a little bit of salt, garlic powder, because garlic goes on everything, mm -hmm. and if you disagree, you're a communist, and some chili powder. We'll do the exact same thing to the other side. So I'll give you guys a little baby tour of some stuff. Living room, Christina's obviously the mastermind behind anything that actually looks good. I'm just the guy that moves the furniture around. And then we have this photo wall and I want to direct your guys' attention to this photo right here. If you're an OG to the channel, you remember this video from last year's mullet run. But funny story about this picture, from here up and from here down is not real. It is Photoshop AI because we took the photo sideways and there was no top and no bottom, and Photoshop AI actually filled that in. Christina is very proud of that, whether she lets it on <laughs> or not. She's very proud of that photo wall. And going in, ooh, that sizzle. That's the sound we want to hear. And it's late, it's a late dinner. Christina's getting hangry. She's trying not to punch me right now, so. <laughs> get these cooked as fast as I can. Hold true for all sorts of cooking. I'm going to just kind of lightly drizzle it over everything. This dressing's so nice because of how light it is. Go in with some of our spicy mango puree. And then we go in with our beautiful piece of snowy grouper. Gents, I know you'll understand. I've been sitting here waiting to eat for like five minutes and Christina's been taking pictures of this creation, but I think it's finally time to actually eat. Yeah? Yum. Not too spicy? Mm-mm. Yum. The snow is excellent. So everything on the plate was absolutely delicious. I'm probably gonna go back for seconds and thirds, I think. And I wanna thank you guys for helping make all of this possible. And we will be seeing you guys in that next video. But wait, check this one out right there. See you guys over there. Peace. <laughs>